Good morning to you. Am I audible? Yeah. Um, am I audible to all? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's say a prayer before we get into the word. Uh, we'll ask the Lord to, to speak to our heart. Lord, as we are in your presence, Lord, and Lord, we ask you, Lord, to open our heart. Just as Samuel said, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Lord, we are all here this in this very moment, Lord, to listen to your word. Father, we pray, open our heart to receive your word. Let every impediment right now be washed by your blood. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, the topic I'm going to discuss today is, uh, is uh, from Act, Act 17, verse 28. Okay. Act 17, verse 28. That's the topic I'm going to discuss this morning. Um, Acts 17, verse 28. In him, in him we live and move and have our being. Okay, we open up uh, to the Bible. In him we live we, and move and have our being. So this is what uh, I'm going to discuss this uh, right now. Okay. Now what do we do we mean by this, this verse? Only this one verse I'm going to discuss now. Only this one verse. In him we live and move and have our being. Act 17, 28. Now, in him, now if I speak about in him, it has to do with in Christ, in Christ. And, and, and we are all, and, and we are all uh, in Christ through our baptism. We are all in Christ through baptism. So baptism, through baptism, we have all entered into the uh, it entered in Christ through a baptism. Now, uh, this I'm going to refer to Noah. Now, Noah, if you see in Genesis chapter 7 and verse 7, Genesis 7 verse 7, there were all together eight of them who entered the ark. All together eight of them who entered the ark. And these uh, eight of them who entered the ark. Now, Catechism of Catholic Church, 1219, CCC Catechism of Catholic Church, 1219, speaks about Noah entering the ark. It symbolizes the baptism by which we enter the church. CCC, I repeat, Catechism of the Catholic Church, 1219, 1219, okay? So Catechism of Catholic Church says about Noah, uh, where it refers uh, Noah's entry in the ark, which refers to our uh, entry in the church through baptism. Now, okay, one, two, one, nine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so now, now, um, in Catechism of Catholic Church, when we see that, you know, uh, if you read the entire thing, that one, one, two, one, nine. Now, Noah enters the ark, right? The moment he enters the ark of the, the ark, what happens is he's inside the ark. He's inside the ark. The moment we enter in the church, I would not say that we become a part of the church or a member of the church. Rather, I would say we become or we enter not into a religion like, you know, religion like any other religion. We don't enter into a religion. Rather, we enter in the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ himself. Hallelujah. So through baptism, through baptism, we are entering in Jesus Christ himself. So it's not entering into a religion, into a practice, into, into, you know, into some, some kind of practices we need to follow or some rituals we need to follow. Or, or you know, if I do this, uh, you know, I need, to, I need to do this, I need to do that. It's not about that. I am entering in the second person of the Trinity. I am entering in Jesus himself. And why do I say it? We can go to Revelation, book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 16. Revelation 3, 16, the Lord says, I am about to, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. 
the Lord says, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Now, spit you out of my mouth means we are already inside him, right? We are already inside Christ, right? And also, if we see Act 9 and verse 14, the Lord, uh, you know, the Lord uh, told Saul while he was going to Damascus, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Now, he was persecuting the Christians and, and are not, uh, are not uh, Christ. Act 9, 4, sorry, not 4, uh, not 14, Act 9, 4. Uh, Saul, Saul, uh, why do you persecute me? Okay, Act 9, 4, it is. So, so we see, you know, that how the Lord, you know, uh, the Lord, the Lord made it very clear to us that when we are baptized, we are entering in Christ. We are entering in Christ. Okay. So when I enter in Christ, okay, how do I enter in Christ? I enter in Christ by, I would say two ways. Okay. There are two, two, two ways in baptism we do. On one side, I reject Satan, right? On the other one side, I reject Satan and his work. On the other side, I profess my faith in God. Now, this entering of Noah in the ark and we entering in the body of Christ is what I refer to as in him, that I enter in him. So when I enter in him, it is, it is, it is my entire being which is entering into the body of Christ. And then I become a part of the body of Jesus Christ. And that's a privilege, that's an honor that God has called us for. Now, the moment we become a member of the body of Christ, please hear me carefully. You and I are supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. We are supposed to be in the world, but not of the world anymore. Because the Lord said that you no longer belong to the world, but rather you belong to me now. So, because I've already rejected Satan and I believe in Jesus, I enter in Christ. And now that I enter in Christ, now that I am a member of the body of Christ, uh, we open to this word and I want you to open it up. Uh, First Corinthians. You go to First Corinthians in chapter 6. Uh, uh, we open to First Corinthians chapter 6. And I want you all to, any of you to just read this part. Uh, chapter 6, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 15. And 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Amen. If my body is the member of the body of Christ, can I join my body with sin? Can I join my body with something that is evil and dirty? I cannot do that. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot join what belongs to Christ to Satan. I cannot do that. So the moment we have entered in Christ, in Christ, let's be very clear. Let's be very clear. We have, you know, it's, it's not we who decided it. It's not we who decided it. It is the Lord who decided it. John 15 and verse 16, the Lord says, you did not choose me, I chose you. So it's not you who have chosen God. It's not I who have chosen God. It is the Lord who has chosen us and has made us a part, has made us a member of the body of Christ. So now that I am in Jesus, now that I am in Jesus, uh, we need to we need to remember it very very carefully. Okay, we need to we need to go for the next part now. Now that I'm in Jesus, how I'm supposed to be? How I'm supposed to be in the church? How I'm supposed to be as a body of as a member of the body of Christ? That's the second part, right? In Him we live. So how do I live? How do I live in the body of Christ? You know. We all know about parasites, right? Parasites. Now, parasites are basically they feed on the on the host. They live in the host. Now, I would say that we are parasites who are living inside Jesus. Okay? So, we are parasites who are living inside Jesus. So, when I'm living inside Jesus, uh, can I do what I want to do? 
I, I don't have that freedom anymore now. Why? Because it's no longer my terms, my condition. It is his term, his condition. It has to be what he tells me, not what I tell him. So when I say about, you know, when I go to the next part, so first part is done in him, okay? Till now I was explaining only in him, in him. I'm going to the next part. That is we live in him, we live. So how do I live in him? I live in him. We go to John 6, John chapter 6 and verse and verse 53. John 6, 53. We open up to, one of you can read it. How do we live in Jesus? John so chapter. Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Amen. Now that I live in Jesus, I draw my life from Jesus. Till now, till now we were outside the outside the body of Christ. We lived the way we wanted to live. I had my own choices. I had my desire. I had my dreams. I had my plans. I did whatever I wanted to do. But now that I am in Jesus, Jesus becomes my sustenance. His body gives me life. His blood purifies me. His blood sanctifies me. His blood keeps cleansing me so that I, I become more and more like him. So when I live in him, I need his body and blood. We need to be regular to the Eucharist. You know what happens in the Eucharist, you know, when we when we when we take the Eucharist, what happens when we take the Eucharist? I'm not going to give a talk on Eucharist, that is altogether another topic. But I will refer to one chapter in the Bible, Isaiah. Okay, we're going to see what happens when I take the body of Christ. We go to Isaiah chapter six. Open up to Isaiah six and from verse uh, verse five onwards, you know, we can read here. Please. Isaiah six, verse five onwards. Yes. And I said, O oh, is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Amen. Yeah. When Isaiah experienced the glory of God, he was convicted how evil he was when you and I approach the blessed sacrament when you and I take the communion are we convicted where do I stand in my relation with God sister continue to read the next verse there is something beautiful coming up the next verse. read yes brother then yeah. one of the seraphs flew to me holding a live pole that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs, the seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Yeah. Then I heard his breath. Yeah. Now, you know, this passage, what happens, you know, uh, uh, Isaiah experiences unworthiness the moment he comes in the presence of God. Now here I want to just, just deviate a bit to, to make a point to you. Now all of us are in ministry, you know, all of us are growing in the Lord. All of us are every day, most of us are every day joining. When you come in the presence of God, one of the signs that God is working in your life is He makes us realize where do we stand today. In his presence, even the minute of dirty thought, even the minute of intention that is impure will come to the light. And you know what happens when we take the Eucharist? Now, this is where I told to read Isaiah. If you see CCC, Catechism of Catholic Church, 1393 and 1394, I repeat, CCC, Catechism of Catholic Church, 1393 and 1394. Okay. 
Now in these two, Saint Cyril, okay, Saint Cyril of Alexander, Saint Cyril of Alexandria. Now what he says, you know, Saint Cyril, he says, the angel who took the fire from the altar and touched the tongue of Isaiah, that fire refers to the Eucharist. And when we receive the Eucharist, it has the power to transform us and to cleanse us of our iniquities. Praise Lord. So, so, so taking Eucharist is becoming, by the way, I want to ask you, do we receive the Eucharist? Do I receive the body of Christ? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I would just change it into another way. It's not I who receive Christ, rather it is Christ who receives me. Amen. Amen. See, when we, you know, when we receive the communion, it looks a host. It looks so small, so tiny in our tongue. But listen to me carefully. This tiny little host is right now at the right hand of the Father, sovereign Lord over everything. He, the Almighty, comes in me. Forget it that you are going to carry the Almighty God and you will tell the Lord what to do. Who are you to counsel the Lord? Who are you to direct God? Rather, what we need to do the moment I receive the communion. That Lord, here am I, your servant, Lord. You have come into me now. This body is yours. You are the Lord. Lead me the way you want, O oh Lord. And may the Lord, and may the Lord himself carry you. It's only then you know that I live in him. It's only then I live in him. If I'm just going to the Eucharist, I'm receiving the communion and, and you know, and I say a little prayer and then I'm busy. Most of the time, you know, in the Eucharist, we are busy singing hymns. I don't have the time of intimacy with God. Please, I'm going to go a little more deeper into it, okay? We're living in him, which is very important. We go back to First Corinthians chapter 6. First Corinthians chapter 6. I'm going a little deeper into receiving the Lord uh, body and blood. Little deeper. Again, we go to 1 Corinthians, same chapter 6, verse 15. We read, I want you now to read. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, verse 15, we read right here. Uh, verse 16 and uh, 17. Yes. Do yes. you not know that Whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her. For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Amen. Uh, no, I'm going a little deeper. Okay, try to understand. When a man and a woman comes together, they become one body. When I come and pray, I become one in the spirit with God. Okay? I repeat myself. Hear me carefully. I'm going a little deeper in spirituality. I'll go slow. The Lord said, the two will become one flesh. So when a male and female comes, they become one body. Similarly, when I pray and my spirit joins with the Holy Spirit, I become one spirit. Okay? Now let me go a little deeper. When you take the Eucharist, you are becoming physically and spiritually one with Jesus. You cannot be so intimate to anybody, even physically, how intimate you are to God, because he is not just touching you on the outside. Rather, his body is entering inside of you. You are becoming physically one with Jesus and spiritually one with Jesus in the Eucharist. That is why it is the highest form of worship in the Catholic Church. Amen. Amen. You see, you see, just as a person who joins to a prostitute becomes one with, with her body. Now, when I receive the body of Christ, his body is touching my body. And when his body is touching my body, I'm becoming physically one with Jesus. And the body of Christ 
has the spirit of Christ, is the totality of Jesus. And so the spirit also becomes one with my spirit. So, so, so taking Eucharist is beyond your personal prayer that you do, you know. In your personal prayer, you can only have a spiritual union. But in Eucharist and receiving the Eucharist, you have a physical and a spiritual union, which is far more greater. And that's why the Lord said, you know, so beautifully in John. We already read it. I'm just repeating that verse. Uh, the Lord said, no, John 6, 53. So beautifully he said, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you can have no life in you. Now I can have the life of Jesus in me, provided I am feeding on the body of Jesus and in the blood of Jesus. That's how I can live in Jesus. And you know, every day when I go to the Eucharist, every day when I receive him, there need to be a change in me. Every day need to be a change in me. It's a process. See, spirituality is not that, you know, uh, stagnant. Every day I'm doing this thing. This is my routine and this is the things that I'm doing every day. Uh, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a, a routine. Uh, it's a relationship. And in a relationship, we only go closer and closer and closer. And the more closer I come to Jesus, the more he transforms me. Now here I want to point out two kinds of sins that we are into, okay? How many kinds of sins? Two kinds of sins. <clears throat> One is the sin outside. The other is the sin inside. Okay, confused? I'll make it clear. Then I can give you a word. Any wrong that you commit, for example, let's be very clear. Say you told a lie. It's a sin that you committed outside. Gossip is a sin outside. Jealousy is the evil inside me. Pride is the evil inside me. Lust is the evil inside me. So there are two kinds of evil huh? we all have, okay? One is in the inside, one is in the outside. Okay? I want to ask you all another question now. Uh, uh, now, where do we get all these things? The evil inside is, you know, Mark 7, 21. Okay, the Lord says, from the heart of a person comes all these evil. And then he explains, you know, he elaborates each, he, he tells number of evil, you know, Mark 7, 21, okay? So that is the evil inside us. Okay, the evil that is inside us. And the evil outside us, that is in James. James chapter 1 and verse, uh, we can read both these verse, just one, one verse. We can just read fast because I'm going to elaborate a bit on this. It all has to do with you living in Jesus. How do we live in Jesus? It's important to live in Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Read Mark 7 uh, verse 21. Any one of you, please read. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, goes on. Yeah, it goes on, yeah. Now, the sin that we commit outside is in James chapter 1. And verse, uh, you know, it starts from actually, uh, actually 13 onwards. Uh uh, 13 and uh, actually starts with 13 onwards but we go directly to 15 yes. good 15 then when that desire has conceived it gives birth to sin and that sin when it is fully grown gives birth to death okay so this is the evil that we do outside there are two kind of evil we do please huh? please now, in your growth in spirituality, we have to get rid of the evil we do outside. Now, unless you are free from the evil outside, when will the Lord start working on your inside? Praise the Lord. Amen. Okay. Now, now, on this context, I want to say, okay, when we take the Eucharist, okay, it's all about, you know, I'm, I'm still continuing with we live, the second part of it, we live. Now, uh, are you all tempted? I mean, I'm asking everyone. And all of you say, yes, yes, you know, in case there's a lot of, a lot of sound will be. You can just raise your hand. You know, Are we tempted? Are we tempted? There can be any yes. kind of temptation. You know? Do we go through temptation in life? Yes. Yeah, we all go through temptation. You can just raise your hand. Let me be very clear. You cannot be tempted. 
you will tell me you know what are you saying and the bible says you will be tempted and like you know you cannot i'm telling you you cannot be tempted let me tell you how you cannot be tempted now for example a person who is purely vegetarian okay from birth and you know he is born in a family who takes only vegetarian can the person be tempted by mutton and chicken and and all those kind of food can a vegetarian no, be tempted no by non no obviously no correct 100% say for example you know a person who is blind a person who is blind can he be tempted by you know any kind of uh, movies and all because like for example you know say say a very good movie has come you know everyone is talking about it will he be tempted by it no because he can't see it see now now hear me carefully i'm making a spiritual truth to you okay hear me carefully i'm making a spiritual truth every temptation that you face in your life is a sign that you are weak in that area is a sign that you have desire of it is a sign that you have a desire for it because right now my sister read uh, james 1 verse 15 desire when fully conceived gives birth to sin for example if you are tempted for power and position somewhere in your heart you have a pride you have a desire a craving for it if you are being tempted in terms of you know opposite sex in terms of lust you know if you're tempted by a by a by a man or a woman if you're tempted it's very clear in your heart there is a desire you can be tempted only when you have a desire if you don't have a desire you cannot be tempted either your temptation is coming from your desire or from your need for example for jesus it was a need to have food 40 days jesus was hungry and so it was a need for jesus to have food and so devil comes right then when he is in the need of food and for judas it was not the need it was a desire the desire to get little more money and little more money and that desire and that desire made him steal the money from the purse because he was the treasurer and that desire which kept growing and growing and growing made him betray jesus and sell him your temptation is the sign that you have either a need or a desire your need and your desire is what devil will provide you and which will be your temptation don't take it from the hand of the devil wait and hold on the lord will give you what is right he knows your need so when we come to the lord you know what happens and when we receive the communion the lord the lord cleanses my inside that very area where i was weak you know uh, st paul says so beautifully he says lord lord take this away from me lord take this away from me take this away from me he says you know the thorn in his flesh and the lord says my grace is sufficient for you my power is perfected in your weakness you know if you are a christian you have no excuse of saying i am a weak person you are not weak why you are not weak because the almighty god is residing in you how can you be weak when you are sustained by the grace of god you are falling in sin time and again because and only because you are not holding on to god remember what the lord said while he was praying in just a many to the three disciples he said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak if you pray and you are and you are praying means you are connected to the lord you are able to experience him mark my word mark my word you cannot fall into sin why you cannot fall into sin i am making it very clear uh you know uh, matthew chapter 1 verse 21 matthew 121 says his name will be jesus he will save you from your sin now saving from sin doesn't mean you know only you commit sin and then he will forgive your sin and wash your sin it also means he will protect you from doing something wrong he will protect you he will protect you 
if you are with the Lord, be assured, the Lord will not let you get into a grievous sin. Lord will not let you get into a grievous sin. You know, we fall into grievous sin because, you know, somewhere we are overlooking minor sins that we are committing. Now, the church talks, talks to us about venial sin and mortal sin. We are overlooking venial sins and this venial sins will lead us to mortal sin. Venial sins always lead us to mortal sin. Judas was with the Lord and yet he was stealing money and stealing money and stealing money. The Lord trusted him so much and made him the treasurer. But at least now you stop stealing Judas. But you know, he continued to do it little by little by little. And when actually he got an opportunity, he could not resist himself. You cannot get into a mortal sin just like this. Every mortal sin has a history of number of venial sin where you have compromised. And so, when you come to the Eucharist, maybe it's a minute thought, you know, because the Holy Spirit will convict you. When you're receiving the Eucharist, you're going in the presence of God the Lord, the Lord will, will convict you. And when he convicts you, don't overlook it. Bring it to the Lord and tell him, Lord, you see, Lord, I'm unworthy. You know, you see my thought, you see my desire. Lord, I am, I am flesh. This is what it is in me. Thank you for making me aware, Lord. Cleanse it by your blood. And then allow God to change you. So that's about, you know, living in him. There's another word I will say, you know, of living in him. Uh, uh, the Lord said, you know, uh, in, in John 15, John 15, he said, we can open up to John 15. The Lord said, if you, if you, uh, John 15 verse 11, if you do what I tell you, yeah, we can read John 15 verse 11. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Amen. Now, I can, I can, I can have the joy of Christ in me. You know, very often we are, back, we, are, we are walking with God as if, you know, we are people who have lost everything in life. People looking at us, they look at us as sorrowful mystery. Now, we are supposed to be all the time joyful mystery. We are supposed to be joyful mystery all the time. Because, you know, Philippians 4, 4 say, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. And the joy comes, you know, by, I can live in the Christ by receiving his word. Only when I receive his word every day. So one side is the Eucharist, his body and his blood, okay? One side is the body and blood of Jesus. The other side is his word. He said, man doesn't live by bread alone, but every word that comes from the mouth of God. In other words, the Rima word is called Rima word, the spoken word of God. See, you may be reading one chapter every day. But in that one chapter, there will be one verse, this one verse that will stand out. That will convict you. That will touch you. Now, that is the Rima word the Lord has spoken to your heart. Hold on to that word. Repeat that word every day. That entire day you repeat that word. That is the word that will protect you the entire day. That is how we live in him. Okay, the second part. The second part of it. Okay. Now we are going into the third part. Okay, we are going to the third part. And third part is uh, more dangerous, which actually uh, you may be able to digest or you may not be able to digest. Uh, and move. Okay, the next part. In him, I said, I explained in him. We live, I explained to you. Now comes and move. In him, we move. How do I move in God? The next part is and move. So when I say I move, please understand moving has to do with, you know, our day-to-day -day life. My living in Jesus cannot be, you know, only morning I get up, I do my prayers and, and you know, in the night I do my prayers or afternoon I hear a word of God. No, no. Uh, uh, move has to do with living your life. How can I live my life in Jesus? We can go to, you know, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. You can open up to 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 11.
1 Peter chapter 2 verse 11. Yes, Chapter 2, verse 11. Yes, brother. Sure. Beloved, I urge you as aliens and exiles to abstain from the desires of the flesh that wage war against the soul. Amen. No, please. Huh? He's, he calls us as exile. Some other translation, it calls us as sojourners. In other words, we are in a journey, okay? But please understand, in your walk, in your day-to-day -day walk every day, as you're walking every day, no, you do different works. Maybe, you know, you're going to office or maybe you are cooking or maybe you are taking care of your children or maybe I don't know what you are doing. God knows it. In my day-to-day -day life, how can I walk with God? Because somewhere, you know, uh, we have this tendency keeping his spirituality on one side, keeping secular word, well, uh, you know, secular work on the other side. There's no secular work for us. Everything we do has to do in Christ. Because we are where? In the, in the body of Jesus Christ. We are already inside. So whatever you do, you have to do inside only. We are already inside the body. Now, how, you know, uh, now how do I move in this? How do I move with God? Now, I move in God with the help of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Galatians chapter 5 verse 25 says, let us walk in the spirit. You can open up, you know, Galatians 5 verse 25. Yes, brother. We walk in the spirit. Yeah. If we live by the spirit, let us also be guided by the spirit. Yeah. Amen. If we live by the spirit, let us also be guided by the spirit. In other words, I need to walk in the Holy Spirit. Now, in my move, I need to walk in the Holy Spirit. Now, what do you mean by walking in the Holy Spirit? Now, I'm not going to go into the entire topic of walking in the Holy Spirit. I'll just tell you how to move in the Spirit. How to do your day-to-day -day work in the Spirit. You see, we all have a problem in our body, okay? We all have a problem in our body. What is the problem in our body? The problem in our body is we all have a tendency to sin, okay? Now, this tendency of sin, you know, St. Paul says in Romans chapter 7 and verse 15, he says, you know, Romans 7, 15, he says, I do not understand. I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. In other words, he says that there is evil. There is evil in his body. Now, listen, there is evil in your body and my body also, okay? Don't say that, you know, I am all holy and pure. No, no, no. That is sin in us. Let's be very clear. The Catechism of Catholic Church also tells us. It's called concupations. What is concupations? It basically means evil in our body. Okay. An inclination to do evil. Okay. Uh, that is the reason our sins are forgiven. You know why our sins are forgiven? I believe you know someone would have shared with you. If no one has shared with you, I'll just tell you in one minute. Because uh, my time is running out. I have two more things to cover. Uh, the reason our sins are forgiven. The day I will, if ever I discuss this topic, then I will tell you. I'll just tell you in, 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 in two sentences. Because we are defective peace. When I say defective peace means we all have sin in our flesh. Okay. There is a tendency to do evil in my body. That is there. Because of that, the Catechism of Catholic Church tells us we are forgiven. Can Satan be forgiven? No, Satan cannot be forgiven. You know why Satan cannot be forgiven? Because he is a he is a pure spirit. When I say pure spirit, doesn't mean he is pure. He doesn't have evil. It basically means he has no defect. He has no weaknesses. Rather, he with his own free will have went against God. Okay, that is why if Satan tells God, Lord, I'm sorry, forgive me. You know, uh, he cannot be forgiven. Whereas if we tell the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry, we can be forgiven. Why? Because we have the evil in our flesh, which always draws us to what is evil. And that's what St. Paul says, you know. He says, uh, St. Paul says that, uh, I do not understand what I do. And this is the problem with most of the charismatic, you know, most of us who are in charismatic, who, have, who, are, who are born again, who have experienced God, you know. We experience this very strongly. I'll read it myself. I'll read it. I cannot understand what is happening to me. 
because I do not do what I want. But on the contrary, the very things I hate is what I do. In verse 17, okay, I'm just reading the second part of it. Okay, I'm reading the entire thing. Okay, verse 17. But in this case, I am not the one striving towards evil. But it is sin living in me. It is sin living in me. There is evil in my flesh. So when you do your day-to-day -day work, you see the evil comes out. Huh? In the form of irritation, in the form of anger, in the form of jealousy, in the form of gossip. You know, you just see, you know, the evil keep coming out. Evil keep coming out. Evil keep coming out. How do I walk with the Lord? How do I walk with the Lord? The answer is, you know, most of the people, you know, when they came to me, when they, when they discuss, you know, about the problems, uh, I experienced this, you know, this is something that Lord taught me. You can't overcome sin with your own power. There's only one Savior, Jesus Christ. You can't break uh, the habit of sin just like this. It doesn't work out. We can break the power of sin by the help of the Holy Spirit. Romans chapter 8 verse 2. Read Romans 8 2. Please read Romans 8 verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Let, let me make you understand. In your move with God, what happens? In our move with God, the law, there are two laws it is speaking. Okay, One is the law of the flesh, one is the law of the spirit. The law of the body or the law of the flesh has to do with, you know, it has to do with the sin. And the law of the spirit has to do with what the Holy Spirit prompts us in our innermost being. So as you walk your day-to-day -day life, the Holy Spirit will be prompting you. The Holy Spirit will keep telling you, do this, do that, do that, do this. And you know, we need to listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit. I want you to open to one more word. That is, uh, open to First John. Open to First John. Uh, uh, First John. Chapter 2 and verse 27. 227. This is about, I'm, I'm continuing with move. How do we move in the spirit? As, John? For, you, yeah. as for you, the anointing that you receive from him abides in you. And so you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you, about all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, abide in him. Amen. Now, I want to make it clear to you all here. Now, if the anointing is teaching you everything, do you really need a preacher? Do you really need a spiritual guide? Do you really need, you know, uh, uh, to learn from others? The obvious answer next will be, no, we don't need to. Let me make it very clear. Please understand. Let's not misunderstand the scripture. The anointing teaches you everything. Okay. Which means, please hear me carefully. It doesn't mean you don't go for a retreat. It doesn't mean you don't hear God's word from others. No, it doesn't mean that. It means this. Every preacher is limited. Say, so right now I'm giving you a talk only for one hour. After one hour, I'm not with you. You go to Divine Retreat Center, you will be there only for one week. After that, you have to live your own life. But the Holy Spirit is with you 24 into 7. Amen. And He is the one to direct you every minute. We all need a spiritual directors. We all need, even I have my spiritual director, Father Ramesh. We all need, you know, a spiritual director. You know why? Because, now again, I'm going into a spiritual truth, okay? I'm going into a spiritual truth. The Holy Spirit will keep telling you every moment, every moment. See, preachers are limited. Retreat centers are limited. But the Holy Spirit, God is unlimited. He is all powerful. He's always with you. So he'll always guide you. But, but, any area where you have a desire in you. Say, for example, you know, say, a girl came to me and say, a girl said, 
uh, you know, she's told me that uh, Victor Bhaiya, I mean, you know, Brother Victor, I am in love with this person and I'm praying to God. And, you know, God is giving me answers. I said, you know, it's very clear. Let me be very clear. When you have feeling and emotions and desire for something, you look for an answer, you will always get yes. You will not get no. You know why? Because you will always search for that yes, that one yes you will search for. Now, those are the areas, you know, when you are fully in emotion and feeling and, you know, you see your desire, you're desiring it. Those are the areas you need to be careful and go to your spiritual director. Because he will not look at it from the emotional point of view. He will look at it from the light of God under the Holy Spirit and he will direct you. So especially when you take decisions, important decisions, very important to, to go under a spiritual director so that what you can't see, at least he can see. The Lord always told us not two by two, not one, two by two. So in a walk with God, you have the Holy Spirit, the anointing. Victor is right now with you only for some time. I'm gone after that. The Holy Spirit is with you at every second. In your walk with God, for example, you're cooking. Ask the Holy Spirit. That Lord, I'm cooking. Lord, I want your blessing in this. Make it a prayer for those farmers who, who grow those crops. Make a prayer for those who are going to eat. Make a prayer for those who are, who are starving for food. You see, your little eating has become intercession. And you have become one with Jesus who is at the right hand of the Father interceding for the world. See, every work you do, you can offer it to God for his glory. That's how we move in Christ. Don't limit your move in Christ to some spiritual activities. Your move in Christ is 24 into 7. And then the last one. I have only 13 minutes. The last one. In him we live and move and have our being. The last part I'm going to say. Okay. How do I have my being in Jesus? How do I have my being in God? Um, how do I have my existence in God? Do you know, have our being means existence. Being means existence, okay? It's only when I follow step by step, okay? Starting with in him. That is, I am aware I am inside the body of Jesus. I start living by the Eucharist and by his word. And I start living my day-to-day -day life, direction of the Holy Spirit. Not what I want, but what the Holy Spirit tells me. Not what I desire, but what he desires. In that case, you know what happens is, I become more like him. My existence then reflects Jesus Christ. We go to 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 18. We go to 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. Yes, brother. And all of us with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, of being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Amen. The Lord, the Holy Spirit with whom you're moving, okay, you're doing every work with Him. You know what the Holy Spirit will do? The Holy Spirit will then, you know what the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will then, you know, will transform your innermost being such and so much so that you will reflect Jesus Christ. And that's how, you know, I come into being. God comes into being in me. I become like Jesus. My talk becomes like Jesus. When people meet me, they say, you know, there's something different about this person. This is what is, you know, coming into being in Christ. Where I become more and more like Jesus. And you know, as St. Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, we can open up to this last verse. And then I will pause for you all for any question. Uh, more two verse I will say here. Galatians 2 verse 20. Galatians 2 20. Yes. And it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. It's no longer I who live. So in other words, you die. People cannot see you anymore. People can see Jesus. 
this is the growth you know the growth in spirituality is not this you know that yesterday you were lo- you were you were leading rosary today you are preaching that is not your spiritual growth your growth is not you know that you are able to do miracles and healings and wonders no 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 your spiritual growth is you are becoming are you becoming like jesus christ has the lord worked supernaturally in your heart that you who one once hated god one you who once uh, loved sin and evil are now hating sin have we come to the point of hating sin have we come to the point of of not just saying no to sin but hating sin because it grieves the heart of my god have god changed me so much it's only then i can say that i can i live and move and have my being and the last verse uh, matthew 5:48 you know this calls for perfection jesus said in matthew 5:48 be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect matthew 5:48 be perfect as your father in heaven is perfect we are called to this perfection family we are called to this perfection now if anyone want to you know uh, want to ask anything you can ask and uh, yeah i now pause for any questions from your side sunita uh, sister has told me in case you know they have some questions please go ahead brother you can continue some more time brother we have some more time acha okay i thought you know it's time for Still questions i yeah, no problem you can go ahead a little more okay fine 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 now now please understand you know now coming into being which i was saying okay to continue with the coming into being the last part okay it's a progress it's a progress now this progress you know how it happens please hear me carefully i'll give you an example to examine your own life so for example just look at a situation in your own life you see previously when someone said something against you what you did is you got angry you asked the person or 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 you shouted on that person now when you hear it it doesn't matter to you at all is a sign that you have grown you know how this growth happens there are two more word i will give you ezekiel chapter 36 and verse 26 ezekiel 36 26 the lord says i will give you a new heart the lord says i will give you a new heart please hear me carefully and understand it your coming into being or in other word you allowing god to be formed in you has to do with a change of your heart and your heart changes you know how does your heart change romans chapter 5 verse 5 says for god for god has poured his love into our heart by means of the holy spirit so human being by themselves cannot love god okay we by nature love sin if you are passionate in loving god it is only because god has poured his, his holy spirit in you and in me and that's how you know our heart burns for god our heart burns for jesus so you know when we come into being you know when god comes into this is the final stage okay let's be very clear the moment this stage comes in that you know that god is formed in you you are ready to go to heaven you are perfect you are a living saint you are a living saint so you know most of us in our journey with god most of us in our journey with god either we are uh, as i started with in him either we are in him we are in the church we live either we are still in the process of living we have not even started moving with the with the holy spirit because this is the final stage coming into being where god is formed in us now going back a bit because i have little time i wanted to elaborate a bit in this which was which was required where, uh, uh, where you know when we live with god you know when we live with god there's one more verse i wanted to share uh, but i thought time is less so i can share it now romans we can go back to romans chapter 8 okay romans chapter 8 and and, and verse i'm telling you where it says uh, put to death the deed of the body and you will live i want to i want to elaborate just a bit on this, this is all i'm going back to the point of uh, uh, live in him we uh, we live and move so romans chapter 8 and verse 
5 verse 5 for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit Mind. Now, what do you mean by you know? Uh, see, please understand. Our mind plays a vital role in terms of uh, our walking with God. See, one of the sign, you know, the Holy Spirit is 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 uh, tangibly working in your life. One of the sign is there is a change of mind, mindset. A mindset need to change. See, uh, you know, we who are you know into spirituality, we are very judgmental. We should not be. We are very very judgmental. Very very judgmental. If we see if if someone does something wrong, you know, if we see someone, you know, uh, if the first thought comes is judgment. Please stop it. It's very wrong. One of one of the I just pointed out one thing. God will point out everything. Is being judgmental. Say for example, everyone is praying, you know, in your group, and you see one person not praying, you know, and the person is busy with the phone. You judge him. See, coming in the prayer and not praying, you know, busy in the phone. You don't know maybe that very day the person's. someone is sick and the person actually is very tense he is just con he just seeing the phone to see is the person okay or is he in operation theater i don't know a mind need to change and how a mind changes a mind changes by the scripture a mind changes by the prompting of the holy spirit because the holy spirit will lead you to the full truth the bible says jesus said when the holy spirit will come he will teach the world of the truth and lead you to the full truth there's one more verse with that i'm going to just because just 3 minutes for me i guess to stop romans 8 and verse 13 romans 8 13 just read this verse this is the hallmark here me careful this is the hallmark of your journey with god this is the hallmark of your journey with god romans 8 and verse 13 for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live amen if you look at you know niv translation new international version or if you look at you know um yeah it says the misdeed of the body you know not deed of deed of body is natural whatever deed whatever work you do is a deed of the body is the misdeed of the body see the sign of holy spirit working in you is this the holy spirit will make you put to death every sin that you are doing it is impossible that holy spirit is living in you and you continue to live in sin something is wrong with your spirituality if holy spirit is in you he will make sure that you are cleansed of that evil you out of it take the help of the holy spirit and kill or destroy the work of evil that is in your action he will help you come we pray lord jesus i spoke the word that you have given to me not adding anything to it lord i pray that the seed that is sowed in the heart of your children that lord let the seed grow that they may be a fruit fruit that endures in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you brother victor thank you